And it's lights out and away we go. Welcome back to Grid Drop. Today we're going over my top six tips for getting faster in F123. You can apply these tips to other racing games. However, today we're just going to focus on the F1 games. These are all tips that I've used personally throughout all my time playing the F1 games to get faster. So hopefully they work for you too. Car setup is extremely important to getting faster in the F1 games. If you're using the base setups, you're really limiting the performance of the car. Um, once you put on a custom setup that's suited to the track, you'll be able to be much, much faster through the high speed sections, uh, especially medium to high speed corners is really where you're gonna notice a lot of performance. So um, if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, I can link a couple of websites below in the description that will kind of give you a better idea of what to change. Um, a lot of those have sort of custom setups for certain tracks that you can just throw in your car and you're ready to go and you'll already notice a huge difference in the performance of your car. Um, so that's definitely a very important tip into getting faster is get more familiar with the setups and uh, just play around with what makes you faster. Turning off your assist is absolutely crucial to gaining time through a lap on the F1 games. When I first started playing these games, I didn't understand why losing traction control and losing ABS would be helpful for my lap times. I never really understood it. However, once I turned it off, I realized I was gaining a lot more time throughout the lap and I was a lot more comfortable driving. So obviously ABS and traction control are the two biggest assists. They help you out the most uh, when you first start playing the game. So if you haven't done it yet, Turn those off, hop into time trials, and just get used to driving the car without them. The first two difficult things are going to be driving without ABS. Um, obviously, you're gonna be locking up the front wheels a lot. It's gonna be hard to judge the braking zones. You're gonna be braking a lot later than you have to. Um, and it's just gonna be very difficult to get through a lap without locking up, without skidding off the track. But once you learn to modulate your brake correctly, trail brake effectively, you'll be gaining a lot of time for the braking zones. You can brake much, much later than if you had ABS. So that's definitely a very important tip is taking off ABS. Traction control, just the same. Um, once you first start without traction control, it's gonna be very difficult. You're gonna feel like you're sliding all over the place. However, again, just hop into time trial and try to just drive effectively, modulate your throttle, especially on corner exit. Don't stomp the throttle down like you can with traction control on. Once you learn how to do that, you're gonna be exiting corners much quicker. You're gonna be carrying a lot more speed through the corners and overall gaining a lot of time. Turning your assists off is very important. However, my one exception to that rule is the racing line. So before I get into a race weekend, say I'm in my team mode or my career mode, uh, when I have those practice sessions, the first thing I do in the first practice session is turn on the racing line. What the racing line does is essentially it expedites that process of you learning the track. Even if you've raced around this track, I've raced around Bahrain a million times, but it, I'm, I don't remember exactly where I should be braking every single time I race around here. Sometimes that memory gets kind of fuzzy. Um, using the racing line to kind of reacclimate yourself to the track, or especially if it's a new track you've never been on, the racing line will really, really help you just get used to the track, understand where you're going, and it's just a good tool to make that process a lot quicker. You can also use the racing line most effectively for braking zones. So um, the red is going to tell you exactly where you should be braking. This is a very, very helpful tool because a lot of times, like I said earlier, you can just kind of forget where the braking zones are and it makes it a lot quicker to relearn those zones um, so you can kind of just get up to speed a little bit faster. The one thing that is very important to note when using the racing line is to not use the line itself as your braking point. Um, you'll see coming up ahead right here, we're going to brake at the second blue mark on the right hand side of the track right between the 50 and 100 meter board so that is our braking point and you notice that is where the braking line turns red so up here again we're going to be braking right before the pirelli board on the right hand side which is right about where the racing line turns red so it's important to not use the red part of the racing line as your braking zone because the next time you go around the lap without the braking zone uh you know illuminated bright red in your face you're gonna forget exactly where it is so right here braking just after the 100 meter board right where the racing line turns red so it's very important to use the racing line as kind of uh, a, a general description of where you should be braking and then using that point where it becomes red to look around the, the surroundings of the track find a physical braking point you can lock onto and then use that again in the future 
One thing I really used to struggle with on the F1 games is corner entry and corner exit, and just making sure I can keep as much speed as I possibly can through the corners. And what I mean by that is rotating the car correctly and keeping your eyes on the right part of the track to sort of make the corner the most effective corner it possibly can be. So right into the braking zone right here, we're going to slow this down, look towards the inside of the corner. You want to look at the apex of the corner. Once you get to the apex, you want to look to the outside at the exit curb, and your car will naturally drift that way if you're looking correctly in that position. So right here through these S's, inside corner, you're going to touch the front right to the inside. Left side is going to be the left corner. And then corner exit, we're going to be looking at the apex right there. So each arrow is going to indicate where you should be looking once you're midway through the corner. We're going to have another example right here on Silverstone. Look to the inside corner. Our front left is going to go onto the curb. Since we're on the curb, look to the inside of the next corner. Now we're looking to the exit curb on the left. And taking it right now, we're going to look to the inside curb right there. Once we hit the inside, we're looking to the outside and our car is naturally going to go there. This tip is hugely important. It really, really helps you uh, just kind of drive more smoothly around the track. Once I started doing this, I really noticed a lot more, uh, not only lap time, just a lot more confidence uh, driving around the track. It's, it's really an important thing to learn, to just kind of train your eyes where exactly they should be looking um, on corner entry, mid corner and corner exit. It's really, really helpful. And uh, hopefully I explained that well enough uh, where you should be looking, what you should be doing, because um, it's a really, really helpful tip and it helps me out a lot. Steering input is a very, very important part of your driving around a lap. Um, if you have kind of violent or rigid movements of the steering wheel, kind of jerking it left and right around a corner, it's not going to be very effective. It's either going to send you into a spin, it's going to keep the car off balance, and uh, most importantly, it's going to be very harsh on your tires. So you want to aim to have a very smooth steering input, as, as little movement as you possibly can, and have it be very smooth and precise. So we're going to have an example right here, going through Maggots and Beckett's now, you can see not much movement of the steering wheel. If I do, it's flowing from one move into the other. Obviously a little bit sharper on the exit right there, but uh, that's just the nature of the track. So that's what you should be aiming to do is keep it nice, keep it smooth, keep it precise. And eventually, uh, once you can get that down, your tire wear is gonna be better. So your tires will be lasting longer. The car will feel more balanced. You're not gonna be uh, worrying about too much understeer or too much oversteer. Once the movement is flowing from left to right uh, around the track, it's gonna be a lot easier to essentially just gain lap time and feel more confident around the track. Braking is the most important thing you have to master on any of the F1 games. Um, once you take your ABS assist off, braking is probably the place where you're going to make up the most time around a lap, going to make up the most time compared to competitors, and it's really something you have to get good at. So the best way I can describe this is trail braking. A lot of people have covered this um, and how to do it. I'm going to give you my take on it. So the best way to do this is if you look on the bottom left right here is my brake input. You lean on the brakes as much as you can, and right when you feel the car start to slow down just enough is when you slowly take that pressure off the brake. You'll feel it if you have a force feedback wheel. Um, you'll feel the car start to slow down just enough, and you'll kind of lose pressure in the steering. You'll lose feedback in the steering. So here's another example in Canada right now. Coming into this hard braking zone, going to really, really jam on the brakes for much longer this time, just because we're going so much faster, and then eventually slowly letting off that pressure. So trail braking is very, very important. I recommend practicing this on something like Monza. You can even use the racing line for this. It's not necessarily about the braking point. It's more about uh, utilizing the brakes pressure effectively um, in order to get the car slowed down the perfect speed to uh, get to the corner. That's what you want to aim to do is not slow it down too much, not slow it down too little, is really have that, that sweet spot, a perfect window to get to the corner effectively. Now we're going to apply all these tips into a single corner. So approaching the hairpin in Canada, our braking point is coming up right here on the left. As you can see, bottom left now slamming on the brakes, slowly letting off that brake pressure. Now looking towards the inside of the corner, aiming that front right towards the apex. Now slow, smooth steering around the outside of that corner. Now looking towards the wall as our corner exit and we are through effectively. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if any of these tips helped you out, please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Whatever you want to do, it'll uh, make me happy. And um, yeah, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I'm going to be posting, I think, more stuff like this in the future. So if that's what you're into, definitely stick around. And yeah, thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.